니키 부셔 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 파필 다 부셔 부셔 웨이 웨이 부셔 부셔 그럼 딱 여기서 종현이 나타나야 되는데 여기서 크롬 크롬 부셔 부셔 니키 부셔 Buenos nachos amigos Welcome to Howley Juku. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm not going to lie, this is a do-over. Uh, welcome to Howley Juku, where we sometimes usually uh, properly record episodes and not lose them, but you know sometimes we have to try again. Uh, I'm Petey Rave, mm-hmm. your man with no plan. Here with me is none other than Brandon Cooper, a.k.a. King Kaz. How you doing, Kaz? I am doing wellish. <laughs> Definitely doing better than uh than uh than your boy Jung Hyun. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what they were doing. <laughs> they were making fun of an old mm-hmm. commercial that you know that is super cringe worthy, and then there's like uh, 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 there's a sub version, uh, and like it's like it's like all right, they go through it, and it's like all right, this is the part where Jung Hyun would come in, and then make it's like. He shows up, and they just started <laughs> expecting him to know it, and he gills right into it, <laughs> and then he eats it because fucking Mino was pouring water all over the place. <laughs> all right, like I said, this is kind of a do-over, so we're we're, we're gonna we're we're gonna talk about some things, East Asian mm-hmm. pop culture, a lot of the things we already talked about it to ourselves and with each other. With nobody being able to listen, which really this is like any episode of Halajuku where we just talk to each other and nobody listens to it. Um, but this time we're recording. <laughs> um, yeah, just like we do every time, we talk about what's new. We talk about what's yes. going on since we last met up. Uh, Cass, what up? What's new? What's what's caught your attention lately? So, um, we talked about this the other day, um, but there's some stuff that caught my attention, and then we're going to start with the boys from Block B uh, coming out with a song called A Few Years Later. Uh, a ballad, still still in the time of seasons for, for these kind of songs. Um, the boys from Block B bring us uh, a few more years, or a few years later, not a few more years. Um... The thing about this song, I will say, uh, we talked about it the other day and we're talking about it again, as we say. So I still don't like the intro to this song. The, the like the first, like, let's say 15 seconds of this song is really weird for me. It's, it's in a really weird space in comparison to everything after that, that I really, really enjoy. Um, I, I enjoy Zico's part. I enjoy, I enjoy everyone's part. I I enjoy kind of how they layered this together. Um, I love kind of the whole 90s R&B feel that the video kind of has uh, in its kind of style and and the way it's shot and the way it kind of looks a little bit, um, especially in their clothing style. Uh, It's very K-pop, but it it, which is K-pop is the the let's take the 90s and then just fast forward but but bring everything from there with us and never yeah. and nothing from this time yeah <laughs> so like, like, uh 90s store back that happened here like five six years ago <laughs> yeah um but but vocally and musically i i really really enjoy the song i have it's really really good uh the the boys from block b are reaching that point where they cannot disappoint uh they're just they just make constantly good shit that i am enjoying so like uh good on them 
when, when, like I said, like uh, little when we talked about it last, uh, which nobody heard. Uh, so uh, when, what I said, like it, when you heard the teaser for this, is this is a pre-release track. Uh, we're still mm-hmm. kind of you know waiting on the proper comeback. Uh, you know, the proper comeback after a couple of years, uh, kind of being away. Uh, when this like teaser came out, like there there was such fear. Like there was like a there was like a like oh no, like they're gonna go the like winner icon, the, like the winner uh like route with like the freaking uh droopy ballad that's gonna fucking bore the shit out of us. Uh, yeah. But and and even like in the like the beginning of the song, you kind of like oh that pit in your stomach, like oh here it comes, oh man, mm-hmm. we we're having my boys a black beat. Uh, but then it, then it, it builds well and it, it it shifts well and, and and it's structured really well. Uh, and everybody has really good parts, uh, especially Zico, especially Po. Uh, Po's part is really interesting. Kind of actually takes a different direction before coming back to like what the rest of the song is doing. Uh, it, it, it's, it's, it's a really cool song. I'm glad. I'm happy. I'm looking forward to maybe a little bit more energy from, from you know, the proper comeback. Like, yeah. like we know from Black Bean. There's a little bit more of a higher energy group, but this, is, this isn't this is bad. This is really good. Yeah. It, I, I definitely enjoyed a lot of it. Mm-hmm. Except for that first 15 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like, yeah. Yeah, it's, it looks it's weird, man. It's fucking yeah. weird. Yeah. Um. All right, but next up on the block, mm-hmm. uh, oh, 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 uh, is <laughs> B-Way with Shalom. Um, I fucking I, the, the more I hear this track, the more I enjoy it. Um, just such really good, just vocalization. Fucking the the play with words the play with the beat and and how he uses his 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 vocals and things like that in the song is just really really fun and and uh i'm 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 anticipating b-way either it it, 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 he's at the 50 50 point right where either he makes that transition and joins that upper echelon of korean rappers right who who are just naturally korean rappers um and are are well known for being that which means yeah he, he'll probably end up making some poppy popular tracks there's nothing wrong with that and if you think there is you're the problem um and then he's still gonna have this really cool you creative gotta, you, no, you gotta go stuff. hard though you gotta you gotta go hard you gotta have the <laughs> swag i mean no no people don't say swag anymore you gotta get lit. It's yeah. lit. Am I, am I um, doing it right? I have lit. no idea. Uh, so he he he's in that fifty fifty point, and I think of of a lot of these guys who, because there are a lot of people that I would say are at that fifty fifty point, and I've been riding it for forever, Fosco, um, <laughs> who live in that Fosco. that moment of they have to make that transition to either do you become a tableau or do you just be forgotten? You know, like, like, do you just go ahead and make a couple of poppy tracks and then like every so often, you know, pull a Dr. Dre and, and make sure people don't forget, like yeah. you, you have the skill and you have the, the fucking rhyme schemes to fucking shut people down, but you're having fun making music, you know, like, kind of thing or do yeah. you try to stick to the bravado of being the underground rapper and being the champion of the underground and not making any money <laughs> so <laughs> um yeah i really feel like b-way is on that 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 pathway right now and i think depending on what he chooses to do with the rest of this year is going to show which which side he he takes and i think i i feel like he's one of those guys he'll make the right decision. You, you'll hear a poppy track from him or, you know, you'll, you'll, you'll hear kind of an upbeat fun can be played in the club can be, you know, played on the radio track from him and it'll be good. And he'll make that transition or, you know, and if he gets too wrapped up in what his fan base is now, which is a lot of the underground people, that he's just going to get left behind and it'll be sad <laughs> to, to lose somebody with that, with that amount of skill. 
Yeah. I mean, it'll be interesting to see what happens. This is a really good song, so... Uh, and it's kind of really cool to kind of jam to. Uh, but we'll, we'll, it's good to it'll be good to see where he yeah. he goes. I mean, it, it is definitely it is definitely a fun track to jam to, and I I really really do enjoy it. But it's not it's not radio, you know. It's not it's not MTV top, you know, ten video kind of thing. I I, I mean, it could be. Well, true, but but you, you you know the you know what I'm saying. <laughs> well, we'll see. Like it, it, it's just a matter of where he thinks his uh, his path will lead him. So we'll, we'll, it'll be it'll it'll be interesting to see going forward. Uh, yeah, yeah. Last but not least, all right. Last but not least, uh, another favorite of the boys on the show, which would be me and Petey, is the boys from Got Seven, which would be the boys from got seven uh with their song fly uh and they're like three of them it got seven is one of these groups that i think just get better with every track like holy shit um i just i don't know i i i am i'm being so won over by the boys from got seven like i'm i i didn't i didn't i don't know i thought they were gonna be so like mid-tier like, I yeah. thought they were just kind of going to be one of those groups that's there that makes pretty good songs, but you don't pay a lot of attention to. Yeah. And the more and more I tend to to try to put them in that package, they just, like, break out of it so easily. Yeah. And it's just, very, like, it's very easy like, to kind of, like, get get caught in being kind of that, mid, that, that mid-tier group because when it comes to, like, boy bands... It went. It's, yeah, it's when you get like a at least a mid tier boy band. That's a kind of a license to print money, <laughs> you know. You, mm-hmm. you like like group boy groups will like have like a teaser and have released no music, uh, and they'll have people in their comments are like, "They're my life. They're my love. They're my everything. I, I <laughs> stake my life on this their success. I want them to succeed." I'm like, why? <laughs> <laughs> they haven't. It's like they haven't released any music yet. It's like, uh, so it, it, when it comes to board groups, it's very easy to kind of like land your bo- your fan base and then uh, coast, <laughs> as it were, kind of just phone it in. <laughs> yeah, uh, which you know, that's kind of why it's hard for me to get into board groups, but. Ah, oh, got seven do a lot of things really cool and really well. And it's uh, the JYP doesn't at least has a focus on making fun music, just in general, mm-hmm. um, and making interesting music just in general. Uh, and I think they they haven't they they've had to do a little bit more work. They haven't like hit the ball hit it out of the ballpark right away, so they've had to do a little bit more work, but. Uh, but yeah, it, it's been really cool and interesting to say. Like, and we we had the conversation when we first tried to record this episode about uh, in the beginning. Uh, like, I was the one that was saying, like, yeah, this is a really cool, interesting you know group. Like, the, their debut was really cool and interesting, and, and it caught my attention. And you know, they had a couple of really cool songs. Their last one was okay. It wasn't great. Yeah, it was like meh. Uh, and th- this one's really interesting. This one, the fly, is is really interesting. Uh, yeah, I I really enjoy it. Like I I like it a lot. Like, and it's, I mean, it's for me, it's easy to kind of like certain boy band things, and this this is in that that level of like using everybody's vocals really well, good harmonization. And I, I really like the beat and the choreography. So, boom, you win me right there. Like, but I feel like it has that little bit of extra that makes it makes it exceptionally good. Makes it that thing that you can show people and be like, you know, this this is a good representation of of K-pop. Um, so, I don't know. Um, the boys from Got Seven, good shit. Good stuff. Worth listening to. Look, looking forward to them. Uh, and Jackson is hilarious. <laughs> always seen, mm-hmm. always love seeing Jackson and shit because he's hilarious. Uh, <laughs> he's ridiculous. 
Uh, yeah. But yeah, uh, my stuff, what's new with me. Uh, so, uh, Baby Metal uh, released mm. their newest album on Fox Day, April 1st. They declared April 1st Fox Day. Uh, and uh, I've been listening to that uh, a lot. Like, the, I talked about Baby Metal on the last episode uh, for the song Karate, Karate, which is fantastic. Uh, <laughs> as far as songs, they also released a new song uh, called The One. It's kind of really cool, like tribute to the to the fans. It has English subtitles. Right. So a lot of it is in English, so you don't really even need the subtitles. Uh, but they do have the subtitles for the parts that are in Japanese. Uh, and on the actual album itself, it's completely in English, uh, which is really interesting. And and it's a really cool like power power ballad. But yeah, the album itself, Metal Resistance, is just fantastic. Like it, it's it, it's fun. It's it's really well structured. Uh, it's super cohesive, uh, and it's really, really cool to see the girls, like, how much they've grown, like, because, like, when they first started, it was, like, it was, you know, Sue Metal at, like, 14 years old, like, it was, like, yeah, it was still so she was, like, 14, the other two girls were 12, but now you get get with this album, and there they are now, it's an 18-year-old and two 16-year-olds, and... Right. The the amount that they've learned and the amount that they've grown as like vocalists and performers is really cool and really interesting. And like uh there there was just a a little mini interview on, on Metal Hammer's YouTube. Uh and and they even like they answered the question a couple of questions in English and that they're uh it they're, they're definitely still learning English. Uh, yeah, but, but it's uh, it's actually really great considering it's not you know obviously not their first language and they uh and and they sound pretty fantastic considering that uh that they're you know still learning and they're still young so the fact that they're 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 kind of blown up and it's exciting like <laughs> I was, was the, the part that I was uh, reveling when we first talked about this uh. You know, uh, yesterday, they're they're blown up. Like, uh, they they're selling out Wembley Arena in London. They they apparently sell, set the record for merchandise sales at the Wembley Arena mm-hmm. uh, of all like artists ever. <laughs> and like they're like they, they, they they're kind of like making it big. They 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 played uh late show with Stephen Colbert. Uh and it, it like like it's been really exciting to see them grow. Like it's been really exciting to see how how they've gone from like this like crazy thing. I remember you talking about how like uh back when they first started, how like the the people's reactions were uh like people very like, mixed. Yeah. <laughs> it was like uh yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's just awesome. I mean, because you, you, you had the, the people who got the bit, right, of like, oh, you know, really good Japanese rock music mixed with, like, the 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 Japanese pop thing, which is, like, it's this interesting mix. Let's see where this goes. And you had the people who instantly poo-poo it because you had the Japanese pop thing, and they're just like, oh, pop in my rock? How dare you? Just, you know, like, anything that people do. And yeah. then as it went along, it didn't, it didn't rely on what I think everybody thought the crutch was going to be, which was going to be using more of the, excuse me, using more of the J pop and not enough of the, the rock and roll part of it. I think a lot of people were just going to just thought it was going to be Japanese pop songs with a rock background, you know, rather than, Japanese rock music with like girls that look like they belong in K-pop. I mean, or or J-pop, like, and that your crutch is just like, oh yeah, no, you would think these girls would be in a J-pop band, but they're not, <laughs> and like that's the whole crutch, and everybody just went, oh, <laughs> like <laughs> you know, like after that realization, everybody's just like, oh shit, okay. Yeah. Well, fuck. <laughs> like, yeah. yeah, and there's like, and the fact that there's a there's a 
there are people, there are talented musicians behind the creation of all the music. Like there is a, there is an actual cohesive creative force behind all of it. Cause it's like, uh, it, 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 it is really awesome to see. And, and like the metal mm-hmm. is really well done. And, uh, yeah. And like, if you looked at the album purely as a metal album, it doesn't stack up that like that, which is fine. It's not supposed to be purely a metal band, uh, a metal yeah. album. Uh, but if you look at it just for what it is, which is uh, a, a mix of styles and mix of ideas, uh, just all really cohesively done, uh, it really works really well on that on like on that level. Uh, it's really well made and really cohesive, uh, and the vocals are fantastic. Uh, Sue Metal is is uh, really coming into her own as as a as a, uh, a front woman. Uh, and as a lead singer, uh, yeah, baby metal death. Throw your foxes out. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, it's exciting. I'm looking forward to, to the, their world domination. Uh, moving on, uh, a song that I didn't include last night, and almost kind of it's cool that we, we had the, the, the fringe benefit of us uh, accidentally do, not recording and then having to record again. Uh, we got a new song for me to talk about, which is a, a new SM Station track. I know. I'm talking about an SM Station track. Crazy. And uh, I know I poo-pooed it. All the, I've been poo-pooing it uh, repeatedly all over the place. But this is actually kind of kind of cool. It's uh, Chen of EXO uh, collaborating with Hazy. Uh, she of Unpretty Rap Star fame uh, with a song called Sumta. A uh, little something, a little something, a little something, something. And this song is fun. Like this song has is a really fun disco track, uh, and it, it's 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 made really well. Of course, it's you know top notch production, mm-hmm. but it's it's really fun. Uh, Chen's vocals uh, shine, but without trying too hard. Uh, Hazy fits right in. Uh, and overall, it's just kind of a fun s- song to kind of jam to, uh, and it surprised yeah. me. Yeah, it, it's a re- it's a relatively good song, and it's a really cute video of of like, oh, I have this crush on this girl that I work with, um, you know, uh, it's, it, I don't know. It's 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 cute and fun, and I I, I found it interesting enough. Without it being over the top, yeah, uh, and and yeah, it was enjoyable, and I'm glad. Yeah, this SM station thing has been way more miss than it has been, <laughs> <laughs> honestly, and mostly just because it's it's not necessarily been bad songs, because I can I can I can at least at least you know you try and you get a bad song. It's just been. Uh, wispy coffee shop ballads and bullshit like that and then like Amber <laughs> trying to rap <laughs> unfortunately and, <laughs> and, and Amber trying to rap and ruining was, was actually a really good instrumental and a really good uh, s- song otherwise uh, uh-huh. and a really good song idea otherwise but then she's like, then the verses hit, and it's like, that aside, this is actually a really good like hit for the Hesum Station. I mean, they're all hits because this is that's the reason they do those coffee shop ballads because people will download the shit out of them, they will top all the charts, and they'll make the money. That's how yeah. that's how the music industry works. So you can't really hate them for that. I just I they just don't do anything for me, and it makes me. It, I, I don't need them. I don't need to. Uh, I don't have insomnia that I need to have <laughs> cured. Uh, so this is not that. This is fun and lively and energetic and really well done. And I'm glad. So I'm good for my sim station. God damn it. Uh, <laughs> I still don't trust it. Uh, yeah, moving on to the next track. Next. Uh, next track. Uh, so uh, we've talked about it multiple times, kind of how we're we're uh, full venting our our budding interest in trot music. Uh, mm-hmm. We because there's something like you know 
a lot of pretty much all of K-pop. You can what you can say about it is basically other people's music. Uh, like it, it is, it is pop from the West. You know, filtered through the K-pop uh, machine. Uh, but trot, you can say, is truly Korean music. Uh, like down to the core of truly Korean music. Uh, so we've kind of trying to been, you know, uh, uh, trying to be, uh, uh, trying to, trying to build our interest, trying to build our, our repertoire and learn a little bit more. Uh, so I'm always paying attention to, to kind of what comes out. Uh, now this release is by Hong Jin Young, kind of a, kind of a more of a pop release, but, uh, I, I adore her, Hong Jin Young. This is her newest song, Thumb Up or Um Ji Jack, uh, or Thumbs Up. And they, they put it thumb up in the the title. It's supposed to be thumbs up. But I, I think, well, you know, sometimes there's the the this is what it actually translates to, and then this is what sounds better in English. Yeah. So. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but you know what? Um, G um, G Chuck. That's, a, that's what I'm going to call it. Uh, and it's just a cute, fun song. It's Hong Jin Young, who's was absolutely lovely and kind of, kind of, kind of, not kind of, but really, really attractive <laughs> uh, and really good singer. And, and this is just really fun trot music, uh, mm-hmm. isn't it? <laughs> yeah, no, it's it's super fun. Like I, I love this kind of upbeat poppy. Well, you know, what? I want to call it upbeat poppy trot, but yeah. trot is upbeat and poppy. <laughs> just yeah. well, it's, a lot of it, it's yeah um so i don't know i it's it's really fun i like i like modern trot um i like older trot too it's just we haven't we haven't gone through the like the full like birth of it so yeah Yeah. there's only so much that that i can really actually say about trot music like i'm not i'm not even a casual fan of trot music because because i haven't gotten to that point with it yet yeah. i'm just like a fly-by-night trot fan so um you know i i i, I do what i can yeah but are, i definitely are, yeah, have fun I'm, with it I'm, our main experience is hong jin young and with that song by lizzie that apparently nobody but old people listen to but because you know, it's trot music uh and you know a couple other things, uh, which have been fantastic. But it admittedly, is like you know, it's like the con- if you think about country music terms, uh, it's more like mm-hmm. the Taylor Swift and <laughs> the Carrie Underwood level of music. Yeah. It's very surface like turning, turning fucking you know starting at the the base of what it is country music and then turning it into pop music. And then you're just kind of being pop music, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> with yeah. that country undertone, and you're just like, "Wait, is this? No, this is pop music. Don't, don't you lie to me." <laughs> uh, <laughs> so we're we're gonna, we're gonna have to properly educate ourselves, keeping going forward to to some good stuff. So there's there's some YouTube playlists to go out there and check out. I I know I've jammed to to one or two of them, uh, so they're definitely worth checking out. So we will do that, and we will report on that in the future. Uh, so last track that I want to kind of bring up, uh, is a, a new goo girl group alert. Uh, yes. you know, I want to, I want to kind of showcase some young girl groups that have possible promise, uh, so that we can all be disappointed together, uh, when they break up. Um, we have girls, girls, aka Yoja Yoja with the song girls, girls, aka Yoja Yoja. And like I said yesterday, uh, they they filmed the music video in a store after it was closed. Hopefully, they asked permission. <laughs> Pretty sure they did. I mean, music you, video. Probably, expensive. probably what happened is whoever whoever uh, owns their label probably owns this clothing store. And it's yeah. just like <laughs> I'm gonna be cheap. I'm gonna, I'm gonna be cheap. Get it on the low. Yeah. <laughs> it's like uh, I went well. I, I was gonna say I wouldn't be surprised if their their entertainment agency studios is upstairs, uh, uh-huh. but then again I don't know if they can afford a building, so it might be an apartment upstairs. <laughs> you know? Yeah, we'll see. Uh, we'll see how we'll that works out. But th- this did bring to mind the thing of like we really need to slow down with the amount of girl groups and and yes. boy groups and just groups in general. 
yeah. that are released year to year. Like, yeah. we really need to, like, cut back and, like... Even if they're... <sighs> if they even have problems and they're good, because then you just, like... It's just too much competition, and then, like, you end up sad. <laughs> yeah. I mean, not, like, not even on the competition factor, but just the, like overload factor right yeah. like like the oversaturation of the market factor is just like it, 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 like even for us right where we do this show we reach that point at the end of the year where we talk about well all right let's see who actually did good and you know there tend to be a lot of the same names in the who actually did good and then it yeah. goes rolls around to all right well let's see what we're gonna hear about this year here's a fucking list of a hundred groups that are supposed to premiere this year oh <laughs> you remember that one person yeah they were originally in this other group that was supposed to premiere two years ago but yeah. they never premiered so they blew that project up turned it into a new project kept two of the girls put two of the other girls in a brand new new project with two new new girls then they took two girls from a another group from another label put them in this project so now you got the two girls from that group and two girls from this other group now they're going to be this oh did that not work well three well here's next year we're going to take that one girl and then we're going to take three established girls that you already knew put them all in a group together that's still not working all right how about we just get rid of all those girls here's some new girls but we're using the old name and you're just like i stop like <laughs> fucking stop <laughs> like, yeah oh yeah it's it's a struggle uh the struggle is real uh i will say this song this song is fun uh it's you know it's nothing absolutely new and groundbreaking yeah but it's a fun song they're a fun group uh and you know they, they, the visuals are good uh and mm -hmm. i will say uh miso the, the the young girl rocking the the harley quinn pigtails has my attention like i said mm -hmm. last night she has my attention uh, you know, we'll, we'll see if she piques my yeah. I'm, I'll, I'll, she has my attention. I'll, we'll see if she piques my curiosity uh, right. later on. But she at least has my attention. See, see if she becomes a, a fucking background on the wallpaper on the desktop. <laughs> see what status? I don't know. That that's kind of high regard status right there. I don't yeah, know no, no. Right now, right now, it's it's still right now. It's still uh, girls' generation. Yeah. I might. I might. You know what? Like, I don't think I've ever had a K-pop person as like the background for my computer i know one cat is the background in my gmail <laughs> um uh i might i might end up switching actually i think i changed that to hyuna actually <laughs> yeah i did it's hyuna right now <laughs> so <laughs> so it's not even one cat anymore she lost that battle to hyuna so yeah. uh, uh she's doing she, good she's she's yeah. she's, she's all right like we said she's she's out there whacking Teaching other people to whack. Uh, so, you know, she's out there doing good. Dance right. teacher and whatnot. Uh, but yeah, that's all for what's new. We're going to transition over to our headlines. Headlines? Where we talk so, about news. Yeah, we talk about top of the topic. So, enjoy. <laughs> here with our headline segment that foliage uh, work <laughs> actually dropped it and had to reach down and pick it up again uh, <laughs> i was like oh crap um we're gonna talk about topic topics and uh interesting stuff uh it's a, it's a shame uh, here's the one thing it's a shame we kind of lost the last night's episode because this happened a little bit more fun and organically when we found about this news uh, we're like, kind of like, hey, wait, this is the thing. Let's talk about it in the headlines right now. Uh, but either way, we're still going to talk about it. Uh, this is really cool stuff. EXID announced, mm -hmm. uh, and their agency announced that they're going to have their first round of recruitments, uh, for being an official Lego, uh, for the fan club. Um, uh, first official recruitment yeah. this year. I was looking at this, and then w w to, to 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 preference when you first talked about it, you said Lego, and I was thinking of Legos. Yes. And then, I, and then as I was reading the thing, I I realized that their their group, their their fan group, is going to be called Lego, and I got really confused for a second. <laughs> and I was uh, like, oh oh, Lego. Yeah. All right, <laughs> Lego, Lego. Uh, yeah, like like everybody say Lego. 
Yeah. <laughs> uh, I will say it's it's kind of fun because that's always been the fan name. They just you know haven't had like an official fan club. Uh, I I don't know which came first. I don't know if it was inspired by, but I know that a big thing for Ellie is that she's really like really a uh, big Lego nerd. <laughs> Like, she has, like, Lego setups, and she, like, whenever, like, the big thing she did when she came to L.A. is buy some Lego uh, set pieces, <laughs> like, play sets, because uh, apparently it's, like, they're really expensive in Korea, like, compared to, like, when you get them here, uh, which is kind of crazy, but uh, which is fun, and I love that that's a thing, and, of course, Lego is also how everybody in, in K-pop pronounce let's go <laughs> well I, it's one of those it's uh, once again one of those like old hip-hop terms that just let's go. went over there and it just stayed <laughs> yeah <laughs> let's go. uh but yeah no they, the first round of recruitments was a kind of exciting time they actually have like a, a page on on melon uh with the, all the info and with translations Already there, provided for in English, Chinese, and Japanese. Um, so you can read its uh, recruitment period is from uh, April eleventh through the thirtieth. So it's about uh, twenty eight days, twenty nine days, uh, nineteen nineteen days, nineteen days. Yeah, uh, it's gonna be on the Melon Store. Uh, you have to be a member of the Melon Shop, OKDGG. Which is the the international version of it, uh, and the EXID official fan cafe, and you have to mm-hmm. level up, quote unquote. I just realized nobody can see that. Uh, you have to level up uh, to like full official member uh, before yeah. you can before you can uh, sign up and be official, uh, which is tough because uh, they did provide this, but the it, it does involve a small quiz. A small open book exam, uh, in, in in certain words, because they provide you the video you're supposed to study. <laughs> it's like a little like going to see. It's like going to to your driving test. You sit down, you watch a video, then you answer some. You answer a little quiz. Uh, but it's all in Korean. And if you look up translations, because the questions get changed around periodically, the translations you look up will probably be. I guarantee you will be outdated. <laughs> So, that becomes the fun part. We still got to find out. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to keep asking around for some translations. Uh, I might do my own little bit of trying to study and trying to decipher the, the mangling of words that is the Google Translate version. Because <laughs> uh, that's always fun. <laughs> yeah. Um, luckily, I, knew, I know a few like simple turns and phrases and grammatical phrases and things like that so that might help um it's just a matter of vocabulary so that's gonna be interesting but yeah this is exciting it's only uh, you know so it's cost it's only twenty two thousand korean won or about 20 bucks it's like 19 bucks and some change if you kind of break it down uh and you get a whole year and afterwards you get to sign up again you get like an official uh membership card uh let me like read the list uh, you get an official membership card. You get a Lego box, just like a little box of goodies, uh, probably like stickers and pictures and stuff and, and things like that. You get t- you get if you happen to be in Korea, you get other benefits like ticket pre-sales for fan meetings, concerts, and events. Uh, you get music programs. You usually are able to get cl- uh, more uh, further up on the line as far as for entry into music shows. If you kind of pair that with like merchandise having and things like that. Um, and you get an, a, a fr- I guess a further level up in the fan cafe, uh, and other special benefits and things like that. Um, this is fun. And I, 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 will, I said last night and I'll say it again. I, I think I'm going to officially try to do this on Monday. We'll try to like see the process together. Maybe record a little special segment or episode or something. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm excited. He's become an official you know, logo. You know what would be slightly cr- cool is in this fan pack is if there was little mini Lego figs of the girls. <laughs> That'd be cool. Little, That'd be cool. 
Like, uh, mm-hmm. or like, well, it, it, the way it would probably work more ideally is you get one and it's random. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like you get like a little one and then you just like, all right, which one did I get? Oh, I got honey or I got Ellie or, you know, I got hidden. Right. You know, it's like, uh, and you can't lose because they're all amazing. Uh, yeah, this is going to be interesting <laughs> to, to, to join an official fan club. Uh, and this is, this is an exciting time for EXID. We talked about it last night, but this is an exciting time for EXID, uh, to be able to Definitely. have this class. I mean, it's also, it's also the funny thing, right? Because I, I, I didn't want to make this, this joke twice, but the, the funny thing of thinking about it as like, like oh like exid it's finally hit that point where they're getting their fan club like it's so good for them because you know they've been working so hard since the start of their career and for most people that would you know be thinking like oh their career started not too long ago whereas in all truth and honesty like uh (laughs) they've they've been around for right so when you really think about it you're like Oh, they finally get their fam club. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. damn, about time. <laughs> like, <laughs> and like the, uh, being in a in a group that is finally at this level is got to be extra exciting for for Solji, Solji, because uh, oh, yeah. she's been in the game for a decade. <laughs> she debuted in in well, the thing is like May of two thousand twelve. No, two thousand six. <laughs> She's been in the business longer than Big Bang. <laughs> like, she's just like, she, like Big Bang. Uh, she would probably never bring it up, but she can make Big Bang call her somebody name. Like, like, <laughs> and like every active girl group. She's senior to every active girl group in the business. Uh, and she's finally, you know, she's finally making it. That's a, that's that's the extra exciting part for for like anybody who's like follow this the, the the girls like the for her like she finally finally it's like when it's like in 2006 when zo uh played for the heat uh came back mm-hmm. uh and got a ring with, with shaquille there you know uh finally you know he's been building this whole career and he finally gets that 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 uh that pay you know he finally gets what he deserves yeah it's exciting all right so Look forward to it. Looking forward to that fun stuff. We're going to do something revolving around that. Uh, so, our proper headlines. Uh, AKB48's Minami Takahashi announces first solo album. AKB48 mm-hmm. member Minami Takahashi announced that she will be releasing her first solo album during fall 2016. Uh, so, it's going to be a little while. Uh, on March 27th, Mar- Takahashi held a graduation concert at Yokohama Stadium. It was at this event that her plans for a solo album were announced. Uh, the upcoming album will be Takahashi's first solo release in three years. On April 3rd, 2013, the singers released her first solo single, uh, Jane Doe. She has not had any solo releases since then. Takahashi's last performance with AKP48 will be held on April 8th. Uh, or was So-called called last performance. So-called last performance. Uh, April 8th, so today. <laughs> uh, we'll see what, how that pans out, because... This is kind of crazy, because uh, uh, like we talked about last night, uh, it's been kind of a meme that she hasn't been able to actually graduate, <laughs> like for real, like she, she's about yeah. to graduate, and then she's got to do all this stuff, like literally, she, she's, she's, the, she's been franchise tagged, like... <laughs> <laughs> She is the literal. She is the literal fucking quote from Godfathers of, I thought I was out, and then they pulled me back in. Like, she is literally that. Like, yeah. she is constantly out. She is constantly like about to hand that that baton off to someone else, and then they're like, "Yeah, but nobody else can be the general manager." And she's like, <laughs> "Fuck." <It's> like, like, <laughs> Yeah. It's like, oh, we, we don't have enough running back depth, you know? So we're going to yeah. go ahead and franchise tag, yeah. It's like, uh, which is, it's, it's, it's amazing to, like, uh, be able to put, I, I love putting, putting things in terms of other things, like putting things in terms of wrestling, putting things, like, especially K-pop and J-pop in terms of sports, because a lot of it could very well be, like, sports. Uh, 
Like the day somebody needs Tommy John surgery, I might, I might, uh, might lose my shit. <laughs> uh, which is gonna be hilarious. Uh, but like, yeah, the fact that she pretty much has been franchise tagged, <laughs> like, uh, to, 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 and, and, and kind of has her, uh, free agency delayed. It's been uh, crazy. But that being said, you know, her kind of starting her, I think probably starting her her solo career with an, a proper album, uh, you know, theoretically finally having her last performance at AKB and, you know, going, you know, going her own way. Uh, mm-hmm. well, what are your expectations for, for her? Solo I think it's going to be, it's going to be okay. It's not going to be like, world shattering in any way like it's gonna be in a shitty way to put it it's gonna be very run in the mill because she wasn't necessarily always pegged as like the best dancer i mean the best dancer or the best singer necessarily but she's a really good performer um she's a really exceptionally well trained performer um because you, you gotta understand also as much as the front office loved her the she wasn't necessarily the most loved by the fans like the girls in the group loved her and that front office loved her but she wasn't always the, the most well received by the fans um just because she's not necessarily the best vocalist she's not necessarily the best dancer that's ever been in the group you know no she like um, she's like Roman Reigns in that or not that 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 close to that level. They didn't hate her. Apparently. See, I I don't know. No, no, yeah, no. They don't. They don't hate her. They don't hate her. They just they eh. they still like her. But in that sea of other people, especially because she she teeters in the top tier. Like she she teeters in the top tier, but she's always very much around the the like when especially when they do the rankings six to ten. Like mm-hmm. that's where she lives. You know. And she's never really been much higher or or much lower than that. She's been lower than that a few times, but but she's not hated by the fans. Just not of the sea of talent of people that are there. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. She's not the most glommed onto. Um, she doesn't grab fans like like Yuko does or like Achan did. You know, like yeah. like they don't glomp to her like they did those two people. You know, whereas like Achan and Yuko, when they were both in the group, was a very viable fight for one and two, and Achan wanted a lot. Um and then for a long time Yuko won number one a lot. And then it was always other people fighting for number two to try to get ahead of her. And then there was a couple of times unceremoniously and shouldn't have fucking happened that uh <laughs> that well yuko was still there she dropped down to number two um but you know whatever <laughs> not that anybody's bitter or anything you know? yeah no i'm not i'm not mad there's not a reddit post that exists in the world where i'm like if she don't get number one i'm flipping fucking tables and very, <laughs> very l- l- as loving as the internet is somebody fucking messaged me in that reddit post as soon as she she didn't win that number one vote and they were like it's time to flip a table <laughs> <laughs> they're like it's time for you to flip a table and i was like yeah. shit let me go find a table to flip like um <laughs> you just went to the arcade yeah. and did that that japanese table flipping game like, <laughs> yeah uh but that being that being what it may that, that being what it is um she'll have a fan base i think it'll be good if it's very much just dependent on the 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 track and the style she goes i don't think she's ever really been t- super favorable of doing poppy poppy stuff um she's more kind of like a, a ballady dramatic kind of yeah. stuff is generally what she's in the forefront for for akb but it's a it's a wait and see because you know akb spans the genre of, of styles of pop music from very kind of rock and rolly tracks to very poppy poppy to very like lovey lovey dovey good girl kind of stuff so yeah. It it spans a, a 
a series of that pop mix. So you never really know what you're going to get out of somebody when they come out of the group and go solo. Um, but, and I mean, it, it, with that being said, she's not going to be the person to go solo and like be world shattering. That's a John <laughs> who's done that because that's what she was. Tra- she was very classically trained vocalist. So when yeah. she decided you know, her time was up and she went solo. Like, yeah, those first couple of CDs sold like gangbusters because she's a really good vocalist and that's what people expected of her. So it, it's going to be a very wait and see what, yeah. what, what Takamina does. So, yeah, well, but I'm excited for it and I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to it, but I'm, I am also, I'm also relegated in the fact that she's not, she's not going to, go very far from akb they're not gonna let it's gonna be it's gonna be a slow fucking process of her leaving akb you know Uh, especially with the rumors of them bringing back some of the other people that have already gone you know so yeah uh you had a it's a shame that we didn't record it for posterity you had a great analogy about trying to leave for work when you know like you know yeah like the Which analogy you don't have to like, like the whole thing, but yeah, it's like it's yeah, the funny. analogy of just like you're 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 you show up to work and you know they might ask you to stay and it gets that time for you to leave and nobody's asked you yet and you're on your way out the door and somebody just keeps calling you back but yeah. they don't necessarily want you there yet yeah. but it's just like can I can it's, I leave can I leave <laughs> like yeah. can yeah. Uh, uh, I want to go out the door, like, yeah. and they just call you back again, and you're like, "Fuck, what do you want now?" And they're just like, "Where'd you put? Where'd you put this thing? It's right there!" <laughs> like, "Fuck, like, yeah. can I leave now?" Like, "Oh yeah, yeah, no, yeah. you're good, you're good." Yeah. Like, "All right, I'm gonna leave. I'm gonna fucking leave for real." And they're like, "Yeah, yeah, no, 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 it's all good. Yeah, thanks." You're like, "All right, I'm, I'm, I'm serious. I'm fucking serious. I'm leaving. <laughs> I'm fucking leaving. Like, don't call me again. I swear to God." And they're like, "Yeah, yeah." yeah. One thing, one thing. God damn it! Like, God damn it. Like, <laughs> yeah. Fuck! Uh, I got my jacket and my bag on. Fuck. Yeah. Um. <laughs> yeah. I, I. I. We all. We wish Takamito uh, well in her free agency. Uh, yeah. Going forward. Uh, speaking of uh, upcoming free agents. <sighs> free agents. Uh, on a, on a to- sad note. <laughs> on a sad note of somebody leaving uh, Minzy to leave 21 but YG Entertainment promises super seriously that 21 will return uh, usually companies so, don't call press conferences uh, to respond to rumors so something was up when YG Entertainment called one to respond to a rumor about Minzy leaving 21 sure enough something was up and YG Entertainment announced that Minzy would leave the group on May 5th we're sorry to inform you that the many 21 fans have waited for so long. We're making an official announcement that 21's mock day. Uh, Minzy will no longer be a part of 21. However, YG said that, uh, his opinion said that Park Bomb and Dadas resigned because th- th- they, they've got nothing else, else. And the trio is scheduled to have a comeback this summer. Uh, they're going to never do a song release. Um, you know, Minzy was rarely utilized. And that's funny. And the, at the end, and honestly, YG uh, Entertainment says 2016, so we're probably looking at what 2030, <laughs> maybe. Uh, yeah, your thoughts, Cass. So, the fact that I've had time to think about this and be more articulate about it, right? The thing, the thing about this is, it is very much a. Uh, uh, putting somebody in the like literally right what they did with 21 is wait and see right not 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 for us because we we got the brunt of just wait just wait just wait but then when you really think about it on the flip side for 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 especially for dara park bomb and minzy right you kept for them you have to realize in in the actual thought process of it they constantly had to be badgered with the wait and see you know what i'm saying like like just the constant like beat down of your soul with oh yeah we could be doing something but just wait yeah like because we're doing this thing right now or yeah we could be doing that (laughs) but just wait because we're doing this thing right now and then the constant thing of like 
because because we, we me and you very specifically this show started at a good high point for 21 right yeah. like we we were on this wave of writing to anyone and one of the one of the very first groups that had constant coverage on this show between me and you and being talked about a lot was to anyone yeah, you know like, um we started with the yg bias and a lot of that was like the you know because we started the show in 2013 i want to remember 2013 uh yeah uh, it's been so uh something like that and we you know they they had uh it wasn't their heyday but it was a nice high point of like really nice single releases uh we were mainly waiting for an album but we still had some nice single releases and it was still cool to kind of discover uh a lot of this stuff like you know so yeah the time we got to you know falling in love and do you know do you love me and then you know the following year we got the crush you know, to until fourteen, uh, but yeah, as you were saying, <laughs> and so we we we've gone through our trials and tribulations following this group. You know what I'm saying? Like we've we've gone through the roller coaster of following this group to the point where we're like you just said, we had a YG bias when we started this show. This show very much started with a YG and a JYP bias. Um, because of the groups that we really, really liked and adored, and, and a little bit of an SM bias, but but it was very yeah. specific for the groups um, rather than for the labels, right? Because starting the show for us, YG JYP could do no wrong, yeah, until they did, right? <laughs> and then they continued to do wrong. Where yeah. now we just have this very sour taste in our mouths <laughs> from these from these two labels, and they put it there. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It, it it it's not it's not made up. It's not it's not like they did some weird thing and we're 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 like hardcore K-pop fans and they didn't give us the release we wanted. You know what I'm saying? So so now we have a bad taste in our mouth. They literally did not give a shit. <laughs> you know? <laughs> and and when we wanted it, when we asked for it to the point that I now realize they were asking for it as well. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. like there had to be these these points and these contentions where they're like, "Can we put something out now?" And they're like, "Oh yeah, the new twenty, the new fucking uh, Big Bang thing is coming out, so you gotta wait." And they're like, "Yeah, all right, you made me wait while GD put out a solo album. You made me wait while Top put out a solo fucking track and then did a movie career. You made me wait while you shipped fucking D-Light off to Japan because you didn't want to release anything in Korea because of drama. You made me wait while fucking Sungiro put out a fucking album. You made me wait while you did Icon. You made me wait while you did Winner. You made me wait while you fucking... Uh, did these like other CL. side projects? You yeah, know what I'm saying? Yeah, you made you made us CL to, to made us wait for CL America. to yeah to think maybe she wants to do it and then kind of back out of half of it her fucking self and then you back out of the other half because you didn't like the producers and shit like and, and then it. you just buried this group that people fucking liked under the dirt of all this shit and constantly told us it's because of something else yeah. where if you just didn't like the group, you didn't like the group dynamic, then fucking say it like, like yeah. man the fuck up and say so like you, you're in control of this whole fucking thing. Don't, yeah. don't wait around. I Like I could see if they were a mid tier group, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I just realized I sound so much angrier than I did yesterday. <laughs> I, I could see if they were like because some mid tier. <laughs> yeah, I could see if they were some mid tier fucking group that didn't have a great showing at all. You know what I'm saying? Like, like, like they had a very lackluster showing, and and you kind of have a fan base, but you don't really. So you're not really sure what to do with it. But when they're a well-established group that can win music shows have won music shows continue to win music shows like on on single releases on just single fucking releases win music shows and you you act like there's some fucking run-of-the-mill group that you fucking you put together yesterday and you're just scratching your head as to why it's not working like yeah. the fuck of course yeah. this is what's gonna happen you know what i'm saying like yeah. like if if the it, <sighs> 
Yeah, the no disrespect will... to to Dara and Park, but if if anyone else had backbones, they would have left too. Yeah, like nah, yeah, no. Twenty one were kind of the unfavorite, except for CL and it's CL is YG's favorite. Like everybody knows that, and and, and mm-hmm. we don't know anything about the actual dynamics of backstage and with, between the group. Uh, we can only speculate. Like nobody, nobody but them knows, and people who are safe knows. Uh, and and I'll put that caveat that none of what I'm about to say is anything but speculation, uh, yeah. and just hearsay and just you know guessing. But but yeah, I have a pretty good guess about how like the dynamic is behind the scenes. Um, CL is the favorite. CL is the one that they that they want to push. CL's their Roman Reigns. CL is. Is the, is the one that they you know, kind of want to be the star. She is the one that's the most dominating, and one would say domineering stage presence. Uh, you know, she she's the m- most visible, uh, mm-hmm. and then th- that's the kind of the thing. And Minzy was not because <laughs> she was when they debuted. She was too young to be sexy, uh, even though she was more talented than than everybody else in the group. Uh, and, and I, I don't know what, what, what it is, but she just was not favorite. She just was the least favorite. And I think it was a tough part. CL, and here's what I think. CL was the one that was most, more favored and CL and Minzy just don't get along. <laughs> this is what, what I, I, I venture to guess because C, this, it would, uh, CL and Minzy don't get along. I, I can almost guarantee you. Uh, like I, I joked last night that if you remember that vine, where it's like, yo girl, let yo girl, let's take a picture. Click. And then they walk away and she's like, can't stand that bitch. Uh I guarantee you that was their dynamic. Like <laughs> like they can't stand each other. So that kind of left Minzy out, especially with the fact that CL was already the favorite. And uh Dara and Bomb get along with each other. I I can almost guarantee you that they they absolutely adore each other. They kind of connected from the very get from the from the get go, uh, just because of their kind of kind of goofy dynamic. They're fantastic, and they know where their bread is buttered. <laughs> like they know where their bread is buttered, and that was with CL. So that mm-hmm. left them kind of more leaning and let's say kissing the ass of CL, and that left left Minzy kind of the the odd one out. So, she was always the odd one out. <laughs> you like, could always, you, you could also see it in that kind of situation where it's just like, um, it, it's just like, <laughs> like Minzy, at some point, Minzy's like, are, like talking to Park and, and Dara, just like, are we really going to wait through this shit? And then those two are just sitting there like, a what? Like, like we should do something about this. Like, like maybe. Like, like I'm gonna go fucking talk to them about this. Like, oh no, 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 I'm not do that. <laughs> no, no, no. Fuck that. Yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. Fuck it's that. A, like, yeah, because Dara and Park Rom, I, I adore both of them, but Dara doesn't have really much anything else going for her. Uh, she's not a great singer. She's a good dancer, but she's nothing, you know, out of this world. She's a good dancer. She knows the choreography. She's a good PR person. <laughs> she's, uh, and she's a likable person. She's not even really that great of a TV presenter. <laughs> like, she's, she's fun and cute, but, like, I've seen her on Sugar Man, and she's okay. <laughs> like, <laughs> She's okay as kind of like the the extra person that occasionally does like 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 a talent on the show and kind of has a funny moment, but like she's no she's no Park Me Sun. She's no like you know she's no like top tier or even mid tier TV presenter. So she's like she needs. But God damn it, you put you put her and Park Bomb in the front of a webcam and it's fucking gold. Yeah, (laughs) and Park Bomb and Park Bomb's not in a position to do anything because. God forbid you have to deal with mental health issues and need medication for that. Um, but you know, it, it, so they 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 have to they 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 have no power. <laughs> and Minzy's kind of the one that's 
stuck out there. Uh, mm-hmm. We'll have to see. We'll have to see how, how things work out for Minzy. Yo, this, all right, so this is what we do, right? We, we already talked. I, I, ju- I just talked about we need to stop doing this shit, right? Take Minzy, take one cat. You make a new crew. <laughs> <laughs> take them two. Uh, give me give me Jeannie of Glam. Uh, yeah. Jeannie of Glam, even though she, well, she's up there in age, but that's fine. She'd be kind of like the, the veteran. You got to have some veteran presence. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, when you're constructing a team. Uh, let me see. Well, what other groups fell apart? Uh, Coda of Lip Service. Mm-hmm. <laughs> the one that got kicked out. Cause, uh, have her in there. You know, there's a, there's a four-person group right there. Just, you know. Somebody, somebody, somebody give us an agency to run. We'll do that. Yeah. Yeah. Got uh, it. Got yeah. him. <laughs> Got him. Uh, yeah. But yeah. Speaking of, uh, of constructing groups out of, uh, out of shattered pieces, I don't know. I don't know how to segue. Um, NCT 48 will supposedly have no job security. So SM Entertainment <laughs> won't have to care if they quit. Uh, they're not actually called NCT48, but they are as far as I'm concerned. Uh, John Yu, a.k.a. Onion Taker, noted K-pop insider, uh, as Karibu would say, uh, has recently revealed uh, some insight into SM Entertainment's upcoming NCT boy group that I hope the hell is true because it's sort of hilarious, and I too as well. Uh, it says, had a chat, can confirm NCT kids will basically have no job security. SM are free to add, change teams of exclude members at will. Uh, intended to lessen the impacts of members quitting. Also, no limit on team size. Expected to promote same songs localized. Uh, NCT is not so much a group as it is a platform. Uh, platforms rely on the whole rather than components, apparently. Uh, lots of debate on whether Seoul and Tokyo should be split into two. Third Chinese units, uh, cities still not confirmed. No one in Taker's not repeating what uh, Lee Suban said. They didn't talk about China being Beijing, Shanghai, plus one for starters. Uh, yeah. So it's basically like, it's basically the AKB48 of boy groups. Like, there's going to be like the A team, the K team, the B team, the, you know, it's like, it's going to be, it's going to be uh, the Seoul NCT. Uh, the like the Shanghai one and the, the Tokyo one and like, uh, and it's gonna and they're basing them on cities too, to make it even like 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 how it's like AKB is Akihabara, SNH forty eight is Shanghai, like it's SKE is uh I forget SKE. Uh, it's gonna bug me. I forget. But, yeah, I forget where SKE is. <laughs> that's where. That's when I stopped like giving a fuck. Yeah, it was around SKE time. <laughs> um, yeah, this is what, what. What are your thoughts, Cass? So, I mean, the the battle royale kind of thing is is the like it. This to me is the almost. I mean, we we we've already reached that point, I and mean, we've already gotten to that point with K-pop. But this is the the over the top portion of the over American idolization of K-pop where it's just like like see like see it as we make it and then you get to decide you know like yeah. like kind of thing whereas we're going to make as much money off this and them as we fucking can while we're putting these kids through the fucking ringer yeah. And then you just get to watch as people fall to the wayside and pick your favorites and, and yell about it on all the social media platforms, which gives us even more fucking traction and shit like that. Yeah. And it it is just. Yeah, it it is the it is the like circus version of like, oh, and at the end we kill the lion and everyone being like, what the fuck? You can't. No, that's not cool. <laughs> and they're like. Oh, oh, all right. Okay, cool. All right. No, 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 you're right. You're right. That's not cool. That's not cool. And then, like, now their new fucking version of that is 
Now we put a fucking a lion, a tiger, and a fucking alligator in a cage together. And they're all going to perform. And if they kill each other, it's not our fault. <laughs> like, <laughs> uh, and then everybody's just like, I, all right, I don't, uh, th- this is wrong. I can't, I'm not sure how, <laughs> but I'm going to figure it out in a second. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> Um, yeah, this is a very much, like, it's very much an answer to, uh, to EXO's issues with their Chinese members, uh, leaving. Uh, and it's funny, it's like, the, the idea is like, alright, the reaction, uh, should we think about, like, hmm, let's, let, this is an issue, maybe we should think about changing the way we do business, learning from our mistakes, treating our employees better, not using them as, as, commodities but treating them as human beings uh paying them you know properly for what they contribute to the to uh the brand overall uh you know kind of you know overcoming the value that they have is that they would have as free agents you know things like that is a no we're gonna make them all expendable (laughs) we can just make it so that who cares if anybody leaves it's just a brand like Right. Like it's the most like opposite direction of what you would assume that would be the the teaching moment of of the whole EXO thing, which is just like just make them even more of like just like just a revolving door, and it's mm-hmm. such a, it's so it's such a K-pop reaction. It's such a K-pop company reaction to that issue, like yeah, uh, and it's ridiculous. Uh, there is a. Uh, I mean, I don't know much to say about it. I don't really know who's in the group right now. There's a couple, but they 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 have a teaser. It's it's interesting. Uh, for like their new release, this one is going to be for NCTU. I don't know what the U stands for. Uh, I know ESPNU is university, so I don't know if it's like a, it's like, the college version. I don't know. We're just. I I I don't I, I don't want to give this a lot of air time. Yeah. Just I just cause uh, it, I just enjoy But the it it is going to be an interesting experiment and I hate to call it an interesting experiment when when we're getting to this point where we're 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 trying to be part of the champions of like these are these are human beings these are people's careers these are people's jobs and shit like that you know what i'm saying like like uh, and but then again it's it's really good sean freud and it's like a train wreck you can't look away <laughs> like yeah definitely <laughs> definitely and, and that that is exactly what it is and it's just like so ridiculous. It's I, I want to see what's going to happen, but at the same time, I don't want to give it enough traction because if it gets popular and I'm I'm watching along with everybody else on the sidelines, I'm going to feel bad that it got popular. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, and I'm just like, fuck, like, shit. Like, fuck, we brought the Japanese to fucking, we brought the like Japanese fucking murder J pop to fucking goddamn Korea now. So, like, yeah. great, fuck. Like fuck my life. <laughs> yeah. uh, but I am looking forward to whoever will be the male male Takamina or the male Oshima Yuko. <laughs> They're gonna have a variety show and everything. <laughs> like, yeah, rock, they paper, they <laughs> oh my god! It's gonna be the I, Kai Dude, Bible. I was so into that shit too. Like the whole, <laughs> oh my god, the whole thing, dude. I just remember me and TT talking about all of these things with NCT AKB. Bingo. Oh god, damn it, man. Uh, fuck, I feel so bad. Oh. Yeah. It's, <sighs> yeah, it's like it's like realizing your engagement ring is a conflict diamond. Conflict diamond. <laughs> It's like African you, children were killed because of that right. diamond ring. And, but you're like, but damn, it looks so good, though. Like, <laughs> like, <laughs> fuck. All right, it's already on my hand. I can't do anything about it now. Right, like, what am I supposed to do? Like, I can't unkill those African children. <laughs> I'm, I'm not going to take it back to Jared. I already bought it. Fuck. <laughs> 
Don't chop a chart. Uh, <laughs> uh, Hal Juku does not uh, isn't does not mean to infer that Jared buys conflict diamonds in any way whatsoever. Uh, it's just the first name of the thing. Actually, no. I think they did. I don't know. I just don't want to get. I just don't want to. Don't want to have a libel lawsuit. Double podcast. All right. Uh, but yeah, <laughs> NCT forty eight will roll on. And yes. it'll be interesting to see what happens. Uh, so I look forward to the mess, the hot mess that it is. That being said, yeah. this hot mess is over. <laughs> that we call this episode of Halle Juku. Kaz, yeah. what do you got going on in the world? Uh, a lot of Fallout. I'm going to go lay on my bed and finish playing that. But. Uh, <sighs> go support all the DKG things uh, if you would like also go to my about.me go to my YouTube channel there's really not nothing there now but within the coming weeks I hope to start doing some vlogs and some like photography edit things there to start doing some more photography edit live streams because I have like a backlog of like maybe a thousand photos maybe a little less maybe like a lot less like like four or five hundred photos that i've never edited or needs to be re-edited and like gone through and cataloged and shit like that and i was thinking about making that whole process a stream about how i go about the idea of cataloging all my photos and shit like that how i go about figuring out which ones i really want to edit to put into a portfolio and things like that and just kind of like follow this process of doing all the creative stuff for my photography thing. Um, something I was thinking about last night and something I'm going to start doing because it's small and, and something yeah. I can kind of kill two birds with one stone, make content and clean up my computer. <laughs> at the same time. Um, yeah. So I thought that would be an interesting thing, an experiment to try. So look forward to that. I'm going to start doing that. Look forward to more DKG stuff because we're going to start doing, I'm going to start trying to get us to do more DKG stuff. So go over to the YouTube channel, subscribe to that, please watch some of the videos there. There's some good shit on there. Uh, And I'm hoping soon to make some. Yep. Yep. The shirts, the shirts are cool. I got to get mine. Um, And I hope soon to start making more youtube specific content for the dkg stuff um yeah. curly has the live streaming shit covered i just want to make stuff specifically for the youtube channel that is centered around being for the youtube channel made for the youtube channel like all of that like just for the youtube by the youtube because the youtube yes um uh, yeah this is you know we're how did you i'm pd rave about that makes up for APD on all the things. Halujuku. Let me play the end music. Halujuku uh, everywhere. Uh, kpoppodcast.com. Halujuku at gmail.com if you want to email us. Uh, Rebelli.net for this and other shows. Rebelli TV. Well, didn't they tell you, don't you know? On all the things like YouTube, Twitch. Uh, I might do more stuff on Twitch uh, as well. We're on iTunes, Stitcher, all over the place. Just go check us out. Until next time. Snapchat, Instagram. Give it to me straight. Pinterest. Also, let's go with this. DeviantArt. Uh, I don't know. Just give it to me straight, Doctor. Uh, Tumblr. Uh, Vlogger. Uh, uh, my crazy. Um, Friendster, uh, 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 MySpace. I can't think of any more social networks. <laughs>